What happens when an object falls or an object is dropped? Well, we know that according to the principle of conservation of energy, no energy can be created or destroyed, it's just changing from one form to another. So when we drop something, the gravitational potential energy it had, just from being in a position that was above the ground, now becomes its kinetic energy as it falls. In this video, I'd like to show you the equations for both gravitational potential energy and kinetic energy, and I'd also like to show you what you can do with those equations when we understand that one type of energy is being converted to another. Kinetic energy is the energy that something has because it is moving. The equation is like this. We say that the kinetic energy of a moving object is equal to a half multiplied by the mass of the object multiplied by the speed of the object multiplied by the speed of the object again. To write that a little more clearly we could say it's equal to half times the mass of the object times speed squared. If we wanted to write that out in symbols and that's how we would normally write it we would say that kinetic energy E for energy subscript K showing that it's kinetic energy is a half m v squared and we can write down what the symbols mean here so EK is kinetic energy M is the mass of the object that's moving and V is the speed of the object that's moving now I have to be careful with the units here kinetic energy is just another type of energy so the units are joules the mass of the object, mass is always measured in kilograms, so if the question gives it to you in grams, you must convert it to kilograms. Speed is always measured in meters per second. Here's a question that uses that equation. A car of mass 1,000 kilograms is moving with a speed of 10 meters per second. How much kinetic energy does it have? Well, like a lot of physics questions, we're going to start off by writing out what the equation is. We know that kinetic energy is a half mv squared then we can put the numbers in so it's a half times 1000 multiplied by um, 10 squared we can tidy that up a bit a half times a thousand is 500 so it's 500 times well 10 squared is 100 so the answer we can just do the 5 times the 1 which is 5 and we've got four zeros there so the answer is going to be 50,000 joules of kinetic energy. The equation for gravitational potential energy is like this. Gravitational potential energy, or GPE as I've written it there, is equal to the mass of the object that we're considering multiplied by what we call the gravitational field strength, which essentially means how strong gravity is at the place where this object is being held. Now at GCSE level I don't want you to worry too much about the meaning of this just yet. This will be explained in a later video. For now we'll just leave it in the equation like so. So the gravitational potential energy is equal to the mass of the object times by the gravitational field strength multiplied by how high the object is in the field. Remember the gravitational potential energy of something is connected to how high it is, what its position is. So that's why height's in the equation there. If we were to write this in letters, we would say capital E, subscript P for potential energy, is equal to M times G times H, where EP is the gravitational potential energy, M is the mass, and H is the height. The units, well the units for energy are of course joules, always joules. The units for mass are kilograms and for height, the height of the object, how high it is, is going to be measured in meters. Again, if your question gives it you in grams, you must convert it to kilograms. If it gives it to you in centimeters, you must convert it to meters. And as far as we're concerned for now, G, the gravitational field strength, is always going to be equal to 10. It's actually 10 newtons per kilogram, but we don't need to worry about the units right now. 
So a handy way to remember this is that gravitational potential energy equals m times g times h, which is also the same as m times 10 times h. Here's a simple question regarding gravitational potential energy. An object of mass 20 kilograms is lifted a height of 3 meters. What is its gravitational potential energy? Well, like we did with kinetic energy, we'll start by writing the equation. So we will say that the gravitational potential energy, EP, equals mgh. Then we can put in the numbers. We know the mass of the object is 20 kilograms. We know that g is equal to 10. We're always just going to put 10 there for now. And the height is 3, 3 meters. Well, 20 times 10 is 200. So it's 200 times 3, which equals 6 hundred and the units are going to be joules. So the amount of gravitational potential energy that object gained as it moved through a height of three meters was 600 joules. Now we can try something a little more complicated. We know that when an object falls it loses gravitational potential energy but gains kinetic energy. Remember energy is not created or destroyed, it's constantly being transferred. So the potential energy it had at the top before it was dropped now becomes the kinetic energy as it moves on its way down. So we can write that out. We could say that the gravitational potential energy at the top must be equal to the kinetic energy the object has as it falls, as it hits the bottom. Let's write down the equations there. We know that mgh is potential energy and that equals the kinetic energy which we know is a half mv squared. Now you can see we've got m on both sides of the equation here. Whenever you see a term that's the same on each side, cancel them out and it just makes the equation that much more simple. So we've got gh equals a half v squared. I would like to rearrange this to give me a value for v. So I'm going to bring this 2 over here. So we've got 2gh equals v squared. But I would like v by itself. So I'm going to square root this, 2gh equals v. Now, interestingly enough, what we've got here is an expression that will tell you how fast an object will fall from any particular height. If you know the height at which an object is dropped from, this equation will tell you the speed at which it hits the ground. Here's a question that uses that idea. An object of mass 3 kilograms is dropped from a balcony of height 25 meters. At what speed does it hit the ground? So here we know that the potential energy at the top must equal the kinetic energy at the bottom. That means mgh equals a half mv squared. And we've cancelled out the m's and rearranged until we've ended up with v, the speed, is going to equal the square root of 2 times g times the height. So we just need to use this equation here. So we know that v equals the square root of 2gh. Then we can put the numbers in. So it equals the square root of 2 times, well, g we said is always going to be 10, multiplied by the height, which is 25. I'll just make the square root a bit longer there so it covers everything. Well, that's the same as saying the square root of 500. So you'd need to use your calculator here. And we can get that the square root of 500 is approximately 22.4. Now, that's the speed of the object, so that means the units must be meters per second. So in other words, by understanding the idea of the conversion between kinetic and gravitational potential energy, we can work out that if an object is dropped from a height of 25 meters, its speed when it hits the ground will be 22.4 meters per second. Now, something for you to think about here is, what if we change the question? What if instead of 3 kilograms, we made it 30 kilograms? What difference, if any, would that make? I'd like you to think about that, and if you've got an answer, you can leave it in the comments below.